I actually want to design roller coasters. I'm thinking thrill rides. I see myself as an aerospace engineer. I really want to be an engineer that helps conserve energy. Science is our thing. This is who we are, this is what we do. I like science because it defines how the world works. It really opens the future up for a world of possibilities. And when you understand why different things happen, it can give you an idea of how to innovate better things. It gives the students the opportunities to open their minds and think about how everything works in our daily lives. Go! It's just so fun learning. I, I love math. I just like working with my hands. It provides an opportunity for us to open our minds to new ideas and experiment. Learn new things and discover the undiscovered. I love science, yeah. This event really teaches you to really use your mind in a way that you haven't used it before. I am pretty intimidated. <laughs> They're so good out there. Mind-boggling, always surrounded by you know, tons of geniuses, it seems like. There's going to be some competition. Look, I mean, some of those bottle rockets were just amazing. I've never seen one that good. To be here in this magnitude with all of these amazing people. It's shocking. It's intense. Nerve-wracking, nervous. Rubber band plus plastic plus wood equals 60 feet of helicopter flight. <laughs> That's just astonishing. It's been a great experience, from the opening ceremony to the actual competition. It's like, wow, you're here, nationals, top 60 in the nation. It feels amazing. It's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. That whole stimulating environment is really great because you get friendly peer competition going on, uh, which is, I think, a really great environment for us. It's definitely given me a chance to grow. I've met some people I never would have met before in my life if I hadn't have done this. All of the amazing talent that's here really affects you when you go home. I myself want to be a pediatrician. Thinking about being an engineer. I want to be some sort of an architect. Making stuff fly, going to space. I would like to become a coach for Science Olympiad in the future very interested in physics. It's going to be my life. I, I don't know. That's, that's the future. I haven't gone there yet. With epic failure comes epic success. Experiments will always end up failing. You just have to keep going as hard as you can. We should explore our intelligence too. You know, see how far our minds can go and how our mind capacity can grow. from the state of California, Palo Alto High School. From the state of Hawaii, Mililani High School. I know you're anxious and I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna do my talk and get out of the way here soon, but we will soon be announcing the winners and I'm proud to say as we announce the winners that we'll also be awarding Wright State University scholarships to all members of the first place teams in Division B and C. These scholarships are equivalent to the current value of in-state tuition and renewable for four years. In addition, scholarships of $2,500 will be awarded to the first place winners of each individual event. In fourth place, Harrington High School. In third place, Solon High School.
The national tournament is impossible without the generous support of national and university sponsors. And this year, our major sponsor is Duke Energy. Mr. Larry Bonner is the Director of Engineering and Construction at Duke Energy Florida and is responsible for the production of engineering and construction designs for Central Florida, serving nearly 800,000 electric customers. Larry is also the damage assessment lead for the Florida region of Duke Energy. Larry holds a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering from North Carolina A&T State University and an MBA from Lemoyne College in Syracuse, New York. He coaches basketball and is a mentor in the Central Florida chapter of the Leaders of Tomorrow. He's married and the father of four children. Please welcome Mr. Larry Bonner. Good evening, Olympiads. Olympiads. You can tell by the way you guys dress that you're some pretty creative guys. I like those outfits, especially those yellow hats with the lights on them. Love it. Love it. So Duke Energy is a proud to be a supporter of the National Science Olympiad and UCF. Duke, at Duke, we have 27,000 employees that work hard to serve 7.2 million electric customers and 500,000 gas customers in six states. Here in Florida, we have 4,000 employees serving 1.7 million customers. We accept the challenge to provide safe, reliable, and affordable electricity 24-7, 365 through ice storms, snowstorms, and here in Florida through hurricanes. We are there for you. As an energy provider, we realize that solar, wind, and other renewable energy sources are part of our overall energy solution. And I'm proud to inform you that we have invested over $3 billion over the last seven years to put these choices to work. But we still have challenges. You see, battery technology to store solar energy and power uh, electric vehicles, it isn't where it needs to be. It's not there yet. We need more solutions to make it economical. Renewable energy sources aren't where they need to be. And some of the technologies that we use to do our jobs every day is not where it needs to be. Other industries have the same challenges that we have. I read in a technology article on Flipboard, they talked about a robot and they talked about artificial intelligence. So this robot will be able to make decisions, but it's not where it needs to be yet. They'll be able to evaluate things in the future and make decisions better than humans would be able to, and they're actually they'll be the ultimate soldier. That's what they're projecting, but they're not where they need to be. You get the picture? You see, that's where you come in. See, two years ago, I had not heard of the Science Olympiad before coming here, and I was totally blown away when I walked on this stage, you know, just to know the level of talent and intellect that's in this room. But this year, I did my research. See, and believe me, I'm even more impressed by what you do and what you will do going forward. And I know that you'll be part of the solutions to the challenges that we face today. And I believe that the ideas that you come up will, with will inform and transform life as we know it today. So guys, last night we played basketball and I was coaching. And we battled, we battled very hard. But in the last part of the game we were ahead and we went down, and we lost by one. The final seconds of the game, we lost the game. It's a tough loss. Quarterfinals, we don't get to come back. But I tell you what, there'll be no losers in this audience today. None of you will lose, because regardless of the outcome of this competition, you will have opportunities going forward. You will do things going forward, and you'll be yet one step closer to your destiny. You are becoming the brightest, the best engineers, uh, biologists, you know, physicists, chemists. Whatever you want to be, you'll be one step closer by your participation in this competition. So welcome it. So Olympiads, I've got a question to ask you. Are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? 
All right, then let the games begin. Congratulations, the best of luck to all of you. Thank you. My name is Chris Curl. I'm here to wish the Science Olympiad a happy 30th anniversary. I was a part of Science Olympiad at John Jay High School in Cross River, New York from 2007 to 2011. I'm currently a third year electrical engineering student at the Cooper Union in New York City. My latest project, the rapid packing container, would not have been possible without the invaluable lessons I learned from Science Olympiad. In particular, the importance of prototyping and how to take an initial idea all the way to a final product. Thanks again, Science Olympiad, and happy 30th anniversary. My name is Topa Peltz, and I participated in Science Olympiad at Beaverton High School in Midford Middle School from 1990 to 1995. I'm now a geotechnical engineer working in construction project management and transportation project development in Portland, Oregon. Science Olympiad was a remarkable training ground for science and engineering oriented teamwork and communication, and it fueled my interest in geology and engineering. Thank you, Science Olympiad, and happy 30th anniversary. Hi! Happy 30th anniversary to Science Olympiad. My name is Sujata Bhatia, and I first participated in Science Olympiad at Christiana High School in Newark, Delaware. My very first medal was in designer jeans in 10th grade, and I subsequently medaled in the periodic table quiz. I have loved biology and chemistry ever since, and I now serve on the teaching faculty of biomedical engineering at Harvard University. Hey, I'm extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer, and also a former Science Olympian. I just wanted to wish the Science Olympiad a happy 30th anniversary. I'm here in my armored vehicle, the Dominator, chasing storms. Uh, we're in southern Kansas. I really wish I could be there for the 30th anniversary nationals competition, uh, but I've got to chase these storms and try to get probes and instrumentation inside these tornadoes so we can save lives down the road and, and better understand these things. It was way back in 1996 and 1997 when I was at Nationals of the Science Olympiad. I did the tree identification event, Nature Quest, Don't Bug Me, Bottle Rocket, Bioprocesses, name that organism, and it was the best time of my life. Nothing prepared me more for the real world than Science Olympiad. And doing innovative science, groundbreaking science out here in the field. So make sure you stick with it and always follow your dreams and passions as a scientist and beyond. Never stop chasing.